In this Lords of the Fallen video, I'm going to be showing you my perfected Infernal Ignite build. This build focuses on using the best Infernal scaling weapon in the game, the Grinning Axis, to give you insanely high ignite and burning benefit. Because this weapon also does wither damage and we do burning on the enemy, it will proc the wither and deal the damage before enemies even get a chance to recover any of it back. We lean into ignite even more with Trilos runes which increases the rate of ignite buildup, making everything explode even more. And with Infernal weapon we get even more ignite and fire damage. This is one of the most satisfying builds to play because you have so much AoE damage from simply attacking and it feels amazing. You also have tons of great spells so you're basically a battle mage which is pretty cool in my opinion. Now this is just a small part of the build. We're going to be breaking it down in just a moment but check this out before I show you the build. Now if you're looking for Lords of the Fallen weapons, vigor, armor, and runes you can go to IGGM.com. IGGM offers the cheapest and most importantly safest vigor on the market. Click the link in the description and use coupon code the saga to get 5% off. Now I know this is a in-game build but in the event that you're going to be making this class if you don't have an inferno based character you're going to start with the piratic cultist. This one has the best base stats with really good endurance and most importantly really high base inferno. 18 is really massive so you'll be able to cast a good portion of the spells right off the bat. The biggest negative with this class is it has a really crappy staff to start with and it does use fire which is really really bad against the majority of the mobs until you get strong enough that it outperforms especially early on now alternatively if you want to have a much easier start i would go with the hollow knight he has really base good base stats good endurance good vitality things you already want you may waste a few points on your strength and your radiance but for the most part he's pretty damn good just do whatever you feel is good for you, but the Piratic Cultist will be by far the best starting class for sure. Now when it comes to the weapons, we're going to be using the Grinning Axes. We got this from a friend dropping it, or you can do like a rerun of your new game. You don't have to go New Game Plus if you don't want to, but you need two Grinning Axes. It scales really well off of Inferno. You can see it scales S off of Inferno, and I have no Inferno yelling increase items on it at all is a damn good app. Alternatively, if you don't have two grinning axes or a friend to drop it for you, whatever the case, you can go with Bloodlust. You can get this from Fritz Roy Gorge facing off against one of the knights with the, the holy powers. I'll show you exactly where it's at on screen, but this is another good option. It does do bleed, so you actually have another status with this version of the build. But ultimately, this build is based around two grinning axes, but this works as well. Now when it comes to the runes, they're all going to be using the same exact runes. Every single one of our rune slots is going to be the Trilos runes. This can be found off of the enemies with the fire greatswords. I'll show you where I farm mines. It took me, I don't know, seven or eight minutes to get these. It's fairly easy to get. And we're going to put them on both axes as you can see so that we have as much ignite buildup as possible because we want to blow everything up as much as we can. Moving on to the accessories. We are at Bramus Castles and we have the Ring of Infernal Devotion. Inflicting burn buildup simultaneously inflicts ignite buildup. Now this build does a ton of burn buildup and it does a ton of ignite buildup. So you're going to just see everything explode constantly and this ring synergizes very very well with it. This is going to be a near end game of your first run to get this ring and it's going to be exactly where I'm standing I believe on this body here. By the way you're going to need this ring that's really synergistic to the build. Moving on, Rings of Night Fire will deal additional fire damage and wither damage. You can get this from the graveyard in the Fitzroy Gorge right after you face off against the Ruiner. Now one of the coolest things about having the Ring of Night and Fire with the Grinning Axes is the Grinning Axes actually has wither on it and fire damage so it synergizes really well. And whenever you actually start to burn enemies, because you will, it will actually burn off the white wither bar from their health giving you the damage almost instantly so you actually end up doing a ton of damage with the build because it synergizes really well. Because we are taking advantage of the burning with this build, we're going to be using the Pennant of Infernal Oblation. You can get this bad boy from Bramus Castle as well. It's like somewhere in like some type of uh, like courtyard up at the top near an elevator next to a skin stealer enemy. I don't think I have footage of that, but uh, yeah, you can get it there. And what it does is it deals additional damage to burning enemies. We do do physical damage, as you can see with the attack. We do fire damage, we do wither damage. There's plenty of other ones like Rogar's Delight, which will do fire since we do do fire. But I find this one to be better because it's more general. And it's going to give us a little bit more like synergy with everything since it's additional damage to burning enemies rather than 
uh, just a specific damage type. Now, I know I said this is a perfected build, but it's actually not perfect. There is one thing missing from this build, and that is the best catalyst in the game, and that is the Queen Sophia's catalyst. To get this from the Tortured Prisoner, whenever you complete her full quest line, I messed up the quest line, so I'm using Searing Accusation. On the screen now, I'll have a video where you can go check out Joe Hammer Gaming's uh, video on how to do it correctly. And I'll have it linked down in the description so you can follow it as well because he does a really good guide on it. But you absolutely need to do it correctly because you won't be able to get that catalyst. It's by far the best. This one's good enough if you guys messed up on the quest too because you really only use like two or three spells. So the first spell we're going to be talking about is the Infernal Weapon spell. This one has a base 18 Infernal requirement to actually use it. And since you're Pyratic Cultist, you have a base 18 built in. So you can actually use this skill as soon as you find it, which will be in the Shrine of a Deer behind his throne in Fitzroy Gorge. A lot of the stuff in this build actually is from Fitzroy Gorge, so it's pretty nice. And uh, it will imbue your weapon with fire, but most importantly, after testing, it actually increases your ignite chance as well. So your, well, your ignite buildup rather, and you actually do a lot more igniting with it. So it was actually pretty cool to the build. I would use this as much as I humanly can. Um, it doesn't cost that much mana, so you should use it as much as you can. On top of this, we're using Infernal Slash. This one comes from Bremen's Castle. It's not the best, but it's pretty decent. Whenever you want to do single target damage, you can chain it pretty okay. And then for our range option, we're going to use Infernal Orb. You get this at the very beginning of the game if you're Pyratic Cultist. It's a nice little option. It does really good damage, easy to hit opponents with, very solid. And then you want Adair's Hardiness. You get this from um, facing off against the first bell enemy after you go into the bell room door. This will give you increased defense and resistances. It's a really cheap spell and it synergizes since you already have a catalyst that is inferno based so this is a very solid setup for using uh you know fire based spells you got your buff you got your single target you got your range you got your defense very all around solid all right moving on to our umbral eyes we're going to be using the umbral eye of rosemont what it does is whenever you're dodging at the right time it applies that weather to the attacking enemy Remember, this is a wither burn build. Your burn will burn off the wither. And since you're going to be dodging because you don't want to man fight as much as possible, you want to dodge, you know, you're not super defensive. And you're going to get some offense out of your defense. I really love when things are like that, where you get offense out of defense is great. And this is a really great synergy to the build. So definitely pick this up. For your second one, it doesn't really matter too much, but for the most part, just get the Umbra Eye Roseman for your Umbra Lab. Finally, for our item, of course, you're going to have your heal. We want some mana clusters so that we can sustain. You're not going to really be using these too much because you actually want to, you know, save it for bosses because you're not using that much mana overall. You just want to fire buff, maybe uh, a deer buff for your defense if you're in trouble, and then use your mana clusters if you're facing off against a boss and you need it. We have wither salts. We actually want to use wither salts against bosses, and then we want to buff our weapon with fire if we can. And then we'll have the wither plus the fire, which works really well together, giving you some extra damage, which is really nice. You can use minor wither salts a little bit earlier if you can afford to use the, the normal wither salts. But this is a great synergy, so they work really well together with your build. And then whatever you want, Brio stones work. That's good, too. Now on to our statisticals. We're going to want Inferno, primarily putting all of our points into Inferno. I put 25 in endurance to meet, meet like the first soft cap. I think it's the second soft cap, which will give me enough stamina, which 25 works well. We want vitality because we don't want to die. And then the rest of the stats is just leave them solid. And then primarily focus on inferno based stats to get your extra damage out of it. And there you have it. That is my perfected ignite build in Lords of the Fallen. This build is absolutely fun since everything just explodes near constantly. I'm a massive fan of fire based damage when it comes to games and well, Lords of the Fallen definitely have a lot more fire resistant enemies. This build absolutely shreds, especially since we have so much wither and it just feels really fun to play. Just remember guys, there is going to be an update with new spells, armor, stuff for Inferno based build. So we're going to be building off of this build in the future whenever the team releases it. So just stay tuned for that. If you have any build suggestions, leave them down below and I'll try to make them. Don't forget to like as well as subscribe to the channel. And I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one very soon. Later.